And hi, everyone. Welcome to Kitchen Conversations. Actually, I think we're waiting for our Facebook friends to get on. Um, there we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Kitchen Conversations. I am so excited uh, to be here today with Mindy Woods. And but before we start, I always like to say welcome, Mindy, to my kitchen. And hopefully you've got a, a beverage to join us today. Oh, see, oh, yay, great minds think alike. They're wow, <laughs> awesome. Well, everyone, we've got Mindy Woods joining us today to talk about housing and homelessness. Um, it's, a, it's an issue that's always been here, but of course, COVID has shined a spotlight on it. Mindy is a housing uh, a community activist that focuses on housing and homelessness. And I'm going to let her uh, tell you a little more about what she does and the organization that she works with. Great. Thank you so much for having me, April. Um, I'm, it's fun to be able to just jump on and be together on Zoom like this. It seems like this is the new, new way that we meet now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, um, I, nine years ago, uh, just this past month, uh, my son and I became homeless after mm -hmm. our was taken over by black mold. And I, um, we searched for help, uh, never thought that uh, this would happen to us. And it literally, um, you know, just kind of blew my mind that we were even, even in the situation that we were in. But um, we ended up reaching out to a couple of different friends, mm -hmm. uh, one out in Ballard and one out in Unincorporated Bothell. And we couch mm -hmm. surfed, as they say, um, oh, wow. stayed on a couch uh, for four months until we could get into a shelter, um, a YWCA shelter. And then uh, we were in a motel for six weeks. And, um, so a total of eight months before we got into our apartment wow. and then we got our feet on our ground again. And my son was in, in his junior year of high school and wow. things were kind of settling down. And then the rug got pulled out from underneath us again. Mm. And we had a landlord that decided um, to no longer accept our rental assistance voucher, Section 8. Oh, my gosh. So we had 20 days uh, to try to find another place, which is the state law, and just couldn't find another place, another landlord, another available two-bedroom unit. So we wow. had to make the decision to split up. And um, I put my son with a family friend so he would have stability for his senior year of high school. And I couch surfed for another eight months. So, oh my word. yeah, so we've gone through it twice. So I got involved in, uh, during that time, uh, from the very beginning, I got involved in going down to an Olympia and just talking with our lawmakers and letting them know mm -hmm. this is what mm -hmm. happened. This is how easily it can happen. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. this is how hard it is to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, ju and just shared my story. And from there just got involved with, uh, the Washington low income housing Alliance and, um, became part of their advocacy uh, program called the Resident Action Project. So that's wow. kind of where I've really, you know, rooted myself in helping to just yeah. share the story so people can understand better. How does this happen? Yeah. How does it happen? And your lived experience led to that advocacy. I mean, that's right. That is, and, you know, just, just to let folks know, I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, it's obvious, but this is pre-COVID, right? I mean, this is, right. this is back when things were, you know, like we say, quote unquote, normal and, and things of that nature. And so your lived experience really think, you know, shows us that it, um, it can happen to anyone. It can happen quickly. Um, and it's an impact for, for women and kids. Um, that's huge. So, so I have to ask right now, how are you holding up, you know, amidst COVID and amidst all these changes now um, that we have in our society and how that looks for you and in the organizations that you work with? Uh, I will say it's very scary times. Um, mm -hmm. As we all know that as soon as COVID hit and the stay at home order went into mm -hmm. effect, that meant that a lot of people were not getting a paycheck. And I mm -hmm. have, you know, I have always emphasize that many people are just one event away from financial yeah. distress. Yeah. Um, one missed paycheck for many, many people. And that missed paycheck came right at the beginning of this. And mm -hmm. then with all of the um, different challenges that the unemployment uh, system mm -hmm. had, many people have missed several paychecks. Yeah. So we, um, we've been really hard at work in helping to 
um, push for the eviction moratorium, which nice. I'll clarify mm -hmm. does not mean you don't pay your rent. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. A lot of it folks ask. Not yeah, mean you don't pay your rent for sure. Mm -hmm. We want all of our landlords to stay in business as well because we yes. need them. Those are our partners. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, for those that just don't have that income, we need mm -hmm. to work on some kind of a rental and mortgage assistance program on the federal yes. level. So that's what we're doing right now. Well, that's really good to hear. I think, um, you know, for, for me, myself, um, I've always advocated housing first. And I think we see that without housing, stable housing, all the other stuff can't fall into place. Employment, right. healthcare, um, education, uh, and, and to your point about couch surfing, you know, when we look at our homeless students in our, our many districts, a lot of that number includes couch surfing. And that's, that's a huge, uh, huge issue right now. Um, and so, so with COVID kind of fast forwarding into where we are now, what are some of the challenges with providing services for the folks that, that you're working directly with who are uh, housing insecure? Yeah, so that's been uh, the biggest worry, um, certainly from the, from the very, very beginning, because all of the protocols were meant mm -hmm. for stably housed people. Stay yep. at home and wash yep. your hands. Mm -hmm. And so people who are unhoused, unsheltered, right away the library's closed and mm -hmm. restrooms. So any you know opportunity to have a restroom, to wash your mm -hmm. hands, um, to stay sanitary, that was wiped out. Um, there is mm -hmm. no home to go to. And um, God forbid if somebody did get sick, whether with COVID mm -hmm. or, or anything else, where mm -hmm. do you rest? How do you recover? Yeah. Where do you, exactly. you know, have that safe place to just heal and, and take care of yourself? So mm -hmm. from the beginning, um, I contacted uh, council member Megan Dunn and we started brainstorming and decided we should get some calls together um, mm -hmm. with other housing providers and nonprofit organizations, people in healthcare, mental health, oh, um, domestic violence services, schools, mm -hmm. all of that coming together. And um, just talking each week on who has what, who's doing what, who's able to oh, do awesome. something. And so just kind of filled in those gaps. Um, and so right away, we recognized that getting, you know, hand washing mm -hmm. stations, getting porta potties out, getting masks and sanitizer was yeah. the big, big one. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, we have a um, gin distillery here in Edmonds called Scratch, and they started oh, converting. Yeah. They started converting um, their their leftover spirits into um, sanitizer, and so we were getting five gallon buckets out to our unhoused friends awesome. in the county. And um, yeah, so it's just all these little challenges. But on top of that, mm -hmm. all of the people in the human services realm that are also frontline essential yep. workers, yeah. right? Because. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is out there taking care of these folks. Yeah. Uh, so for them, their health and well-being and safety was also mm -hmm. important. Yeah. So figuring out how we can still service people and keep ourselves safe um, was a big challenge. I will say that I did contract COVID. So I was doing this from right here wow. from my couch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And that's how it all, and that's the intersections I think that we see with this virus, right? So it's, it's affecting your advocacy work, it's affecting uh, frontline people, but so now you as a mother and as a, um, as a community activist, right? You're, now you're hit with the thing that everyone is, is right. trying to avoid. You're hit with COVID. So I guess, so now I, I have to ask, like, how, how are you feeling? Are you doing okay physically? Like, is, I mean, I, you know, I feel like we're on Zoom. It's like, what can I do for you? What can I, can I do anything? But how are you feeling right now? Uh, today marks the 12th week of symptoms. Wow. Wow. I am in the class of people that are called um, long-term COVID uh, virus. I don't know. It's some yeah. kind of like just long that long haul, haul that you're on. Yeah. Long yeah. haul. So dizzy spells, still constant fatigue oh, and wow. um, some, some uh, heart palpitation issues, but otherwise I'm yeah. working and moving forward and just trying to pace myself. Wow. Well, good. Well, and you, you know, we're connected via social media and, and yeah. through lots of friends and, and networks. So definitely if there is something that you need, you know, I do not mind Thank bringing, you. you know, loaf of bread, anything that you need. So I, <laughs> I think we're all in this together right now, you know, despite so doing these, these conversations over zoom, um, 
it's just we we really are all in this together. So I think for for folks watching, you know, if you if you've got a friend you haven't checked on, or you've got someone that you're just not sure because you're, you're not seeing them in the workplace, you're not seeing them in the Starbucks line, you know, reach out to them because you're not you never know what they're going through. So, but thank you for sharing that, Mindy, and thank you for for sharing just that you're recovering and that it is a it's a long haul. Yeah. So thank you. from from here, you know, as a state and as local jurisdictions, what would you as a, a an advocate want to happen um because i know we can't go back to the the old normal right we can't go back to what we did before so looking forward looking in the now and looking in the future what what do you want the the folks at the local level and the state level to do to support um after this crisis um i i am glad you brought that up um number one we need to recognize that we are in desperate need for more affordable housing Yes. And when I say affordable, I mean for people who are, are at that low income level. Mm -hmm. um, there's very few units available. For every um, 100 people who need an affordable place to call home, there's only 29 mm -hmm. units available. So wow. that leaves a big wow. gap. And, um, and then permanent supportive housing. We have many, many mm -hmm. people that are going to have different kinds of challenges that are not temporary. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. gonna need those supportive services on, a, on an ongoing basis. Yes. And, um, and so that um, helps to alleviate, um, you know, when we have that, that proper support system around people, we can mm -hmm. really help them to um, live up to their fullest potential. Um, yeah. So um, we're, we're really gonna need to, to invest in permanent supportive housing, but zoning mm -hmm. changes too, city level, county level, we need to change the zoning um, and have those, those you know, mixed, in, or mixed income neighborhoods and mixed type of housing opportunities mm -hmm. for people. Um, and I will say too, especially in light of, of the movement that is the worldwide movement that is going on right now, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. everything we do, we need to do through the lens of equity Yes, um, thank you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. People of color are the most disproportionately affected by mm -hmm. homelessness, as yes. well as housing instability. And mm -hmm. um, I just got off a call just 15 minutes ago and talking about how do we help our landlords understand that many mm -hmm. uh, practices have been very discriminatory. And yes. so, so we need to, to look at things from a systemic um, place as well and, and the practices that we have used the different types of ho housing policies. Mm -hmm. uh, so really we need to, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, yeah. But number one, you know, thought process needs to be communities are stronger when people are housed. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a bottom line. That's a, it's a human right. I mean, right. it really is. It's a human right. 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 Well, I'm glad you brought that up about uh, about more affordable housing because one of the ways that conversation took place in my local community was just around workforce housing, and it was interesting to see the difference in support when we talked about affordable housing, where some folks think of that as low income and and you're you know given some something to someone that they don't deserve. It's a whole other conversation. Um, but they, but then once we start calling it workforce, they went, oh wait, you're right because my entry level nurses, uh, my entry-level teachers and firefighters and, and all the folks serving, you know, call centers are a big thing, right? Entry-level call center workers can actually afford to live in the communities that we call home. Well, that conversation looked way different, less vitriol and more support. So um, that's, I'm glad you mentioned affordable housing and, and workforce housing. We, we did have a question from uh, council member Vogley asked about city zoning and uh, changes and do we have any, do you have any recommendations or would they be beneficial? You, you touched on that a little bit, but did you want to expand it all on kind of that, the city's role in that? Yeah, so cities have uh, have a major role in this. Um, you know, I know that, uh, you know, when you know, just even conversations on, on the South County um, that we um, are looking at, you know, I live in Edmonds and we are at 98% land capacity use right now. Yep. So yep. we don't have a lot of opportunities, but on Highway 99, it's perfect area to start looking at a little bit more density. Um, mm -hmm. That's, you know, right on transportation corridor, um, that's where a lot of, um, you know, shopping and retail is. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it's, and it's close to the freeway as well. Yep. Um, so it's a great opportunity to start looking mm -hmm. at this um, multifamily yep. housing and different types of options. 
going back to things like triplexes and duplexes, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. different types of, of housing options. And I'm not just talking about low income, but you're right, you Absolutely. know, workforce housing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think about, we have a, 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 an older population here, a lot mm -hmm. of seniors in Edmonds. And, you know, a lot of times where, you know, one spouse passes and then you've got one person mm -hmm. in this big house. It's just mm -hmm. too much house for them. Um, mm -hmm. The maintenance, the upkeep, all of that. So where can they go and still stay in their community with their support system around them yeah. that is affordable? Well, the mm -hmm. options are so very limited. So we mm -hmm. need to be thinking in terms of, uh, you know, our aging population, yeah. our young families just starting out, first time Absolutely. home buyers. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be thinking in terms of, you know, when we can live closer to areas where we can also work then we mm -hmm. create much less density on the roads and that's much less yep. a detrimental impact on the environment. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is where cities come in. This is where the zoning comes in, where we can set aside, mm -hmm. you know, in new development, maybe 20% yep. of that new development for more affordable housing. That's going to take incentives. That's where mm -hmm. cities come into play. And thank you for that. So that that gave cities a really big list of ways that they can, they can impact housing. And I think, you know, the message I hear in all of your examples and all of uh, the things that you've laid out are it's doable. This is doable. We yes. can change the rules. We can be agile. We can have these amazing organic communities that change with our populations. And again, you know, to the point about aging. And so that's, that's one thing where you don't want folks um, aging out of a community and you don't want folks not able to come into a community as they, as they start their, their workforce journey. So um, that, that gave, I think, a lot of our city folks, city leaders, a lot to chew on. So thank you. Um, so, so now, like, let's flip this. What can we do as citizens, right? How, what's the call to action for, for the folks sitting at home uh, the moms, the dads, the grandparents. Um, I know we've got some teens on. Um, what what do we do now? So again, that that normal is going to be a new normal, a better normal than where we started. Right, right. Well, uh, number one is sharing your stories um, with mm -hmm. our elected officials, city, county, state level. Um, yeah, I know good. that with COVID having just hit, uh, there's going to be a lot of um, budget cuts that are going to be coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And I know one of them that uh, we just found out about today is a, is a proposed $16 million cut to mm -hmm. our housing and essential needs program. Those people mm -hmm. that are on that program are our people with disabilities, wow. our most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. If we don't have those programs in place, where do mm -hmm. those people go? Yeah. Start yeah. thinking about if it's your Absolutely. grandparent, if it's your, uh, you know, your family member, your loved one, what would you, mm -hmm. where would you want them to be? What type of environment would you want them to be in? And so contacting your city council mm -hmm. members, go to the, or, you know, we can't go places, but we can jump. Yeah, on but no, absolutely. We jump on Zoom. Or an, mm -hmm. e an email, a phone call yep. and just, hey, absolutely. I'm really, or I've got a, you know, a, a, a kid that's graduating from college and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, housing options are very few and far between yep. for them. I'd want for them to be able to, you know, utilize their new degree and be able to live somewhere near where they're going to be working, you know, hey, what can we do? And so just really mm -hmm. advocating for those different types of housing options yes. at the various income prices and not just single family homes, because yes. that's just not going to be attainable for many, many people. For many people, that those are great those are great things that everybody can be an advocate. And I, I want to highlight one thing you said, Mindy, um, talking with your city council members, your city leaders, your county leaders, um, even though we're in COVID and even though we're doing a lot of things by Zoom and virtually, public comment is still open. We're still under the rules and regulations of open public meetings. Um, and there are laws about that. So there are public comment periods um, at different intervals for all of these elected bodies. So I encourage everyone out there to take advantage of that um, for the simple fact that it's much easier now, right, to have your voice heard. You're at home and you're, you're not driving out at maybe an inconvenient time or an inconvenient place. So, so definitely let uh, public officials know what you're thinking about issues. And something like housing is, is a powerful issue that we have to have in the forefront because again, housing first. 
<laughs> you can't do right. anything. You right. can't do anything without without housing. So so as as you, I know you sit on a lot of amazing boards that do so much amazing work. Um, is that advocacy work going to change at all? Do you think um, as we're coming out of COVID, um, do you think that there's going to be any tilts or changes in that space of advocacy around for housing and homelessness? I think, so ironically, uh, it came up in my timeline just this week that a year ago mm -hmm. this week, I did a panel at the Edmonds Library to, and it was through the Snow Isle Library System called Housing Where Are We All Going to Live? Mm -hmm. And Interesting. the very point I kept making over and over again that evening um, mm -hmm. was that it's, we are many of us, many of us are only mm -hmm. one paycheck or one crisis yeah. away from housing instability. Well, here are, here, here we are hit with this COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have more people looking for rental assistance in the month of March alone for Snohomish County, rental assistance requests mm -hmm. went up 60%. They went up 60%. 60%. And that was March. Wow. April absolutely skyrocketed. Wow. So we have more people now who have never ever needed to ask for help. Yeah. That are having to 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 call out for help now. They are absolutely. going to lose their homes. They're going to lose their apartments. So right now, you know, rental assistance is the biggest or and mortgage and mortgage assistance. So mm -hmm. that is where people can, you know, really contact your local yeah. city officials, city uh, council, county council, and state, mm -hmm. and really push for some kind of a relief program that's going to come Absolutely. with this, hopefully this next CARES package. Because mm -hmm. if we don't, we're going to have an explosion of homelessness like we have never seen yeah, before. And housing is healthcare. When yeah. you are unhoused, yeah. not only are you exposed to the pandemic that's out there right now, but all, mm -hmm. you know, flu season, everything else that comes around. But also yeah. just that stress mm -hmm. does so much damage to the physical body and your emotional and mental well-being. And mm -hmm. the long-term effects of that are a huge drain on our on our healthcare system. So mm -hmm. housing is healthcare. That's one number one. Number wow. two, how it's going to change advocacy is I think you're going to find that more people will have been touched by housing inst instability than That's ever true. before. So mm -hmm. more and more people are going to start to come on They're to gonna understand it. Yes. And start having mm -hmm. some kind of empathy yeah. and compassion and say, gosh, I, it had never occurred to me before. I had a secure job. I thought yep. that yep. It, it would never happen to me. Mm -hmm. and yes. Now. And it does. Yeah. Thank you for that. Because it, as you were talking again, I'm thinking you're stemming the flow, right? You go from this, from an advocate and, and advocacy work, dealing with issues at hand and dealing with what we currently see. Um, now you're dealing with the unseen, the unseen, which is like, you know, and, and data doesn't, doesn't lie, um, right. that if you're seeing that 60% uptick in rental in assistance requests, that means that you've got a lot of folks struggling and they're yeah. not just going to struggle for one month. It's going to be multiple and that could end up being um, where they are housing insecure. So that's, that's a lot to chew on. Um, yeah. I think that we all know it, but I, I'm glad you came on today because hearing it from someone who's boots on the ground, doing the work, talking to the folks, listening to the story and its stories and having your own lived experience, that's, that's priceless. So I, um, you've really kind of opened my eyes to, to some stuff that I, I knew about, but I didn't think about in those terms. So Mindy, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Leadership matters. And so just your leadership in this space matters so much. Um, the leaders that you're talking to about helping in this space, that matters as well. So uh, for those listening out there, if, if you're in a space where you can help and where you're, uh, you know, at a, at a county or city or state level, I encourage you to really, really look at the Housing First movement, the Housing First platforms, the Housing Trust, as well as fully funding supportive housing. Yes. Gal, thank you so much, Mindy. And we're going to close out, but is there anything else you want to share with our listeners, our viewers? Um, I feel like there's, we could talk for like an hour. This is <laughs> amazing stuff, sad stuff, but just important things. Um, I will just say that, you know, right now our, our real, real heavy a lift right now is to, is to really push for rental and mortgage assistance. Um, when we can keep people housed, it is cheaper to keep people housed than it is to try to get them back into housing afterward. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. keeping people housed is 
um, cost effective. It is, you know, healthcare right there. Um, mm -hmm. But it also keeps those landlords in business as well, like yep. I was saying. So yes, we're in this eviction moratorium until August 1st. Um, mm -hmm. But that is that only means if you cannot pay your rent, that there, you know, you're you will not be facing an eviction, but you will yeah. owe that rent. So we need to find that those federal dollars to help those people stay in place to and restabilize mm -hmm. the housing uh, situation for both the tenants, the um, homeowners who are struggling to mm -hmm. pay that mortgage, and um, and for our small um, landlords to keep them in business. That's huge. So yeah, so the, the relief right now, it's, and it's like, to your point, it's a deferral, not, not going away forever, but right. okay, that's, that's our go forward. That's our, that's our goal. Cause you know, taking off those, those small bits, those small steps, get us, get us down the road uh, even further. So well, Mindy, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for your advocacy work. Thank you for sharing your story on so many levels. Um, I just, I can't tell you how powerful and impactful it is. Um, and thank you for just, just being on Kitchen Conversations today. So for our viewers out there, thank you for joining us um, and joining Mindy in listening to a really, really important issue and learning some ways that you can be impactful um, with housing and homelessness. And we, of course, will, uh, will offer some resources when we upload this <laughs> to, the, to the Magic Cloud so that folks can know where to go uh, to request that assistance or request more information because that's, that's an important piece too. Well, Mindy, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you all for listening. And hopefully everybody will join us next week. We'll be talking about the environment right here on Tuesday, 3 p.m. for Kitchen Conversations. Thanks, Mindy. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank